Hello everyone, I'm Wookie, and I'm damn it, that's not how I intro this. God damn it, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to Between Buddies. I'm Wilkie and I'm here with my good buddy Jace. Hello. And his good buddy Captain Soldier 76. Yeah. God, why are you just <laughs> cutting me off right at the beginning? <laughs> like I was trying I'm trying I'm very self-conscious about my intros and you're over here like a fucking wildebeest <laughs> stomping all over it. I thought it sounded good. <laughs> Dude, you know what? You did very good. I'm not gonna lie. I really liked your enthusiasm. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm just self conscious. <laughs> uh, so, welcome to Between Buddies, a, a show in which I just want to hang out with my buddies. And that's what we're gonna be doing today. Before we go into today's topic, um, preview on the last in the first episode. Oh, God. Why is my phone acting so dumb? I'm trying to on do the last some- episode of Dragon Ball Z. Yes, in the last episode of Between Buddies, Jace had a question for people, which was, what is your favorite uh, harem? And people actually answered, which I was actually kind of surprised. <laughs> that means they listened. It's true. I'm not I'm not used to that. I'm not used to people talking. That's great. Bad. So can I, I like add can I like add to my answer? Because I like I was reading it the other day and I was like, oh, wait, that wasn't a completely true. I actually have like a, a tie. With Uruka and Furuhashi. It's hard to choose, but I like both of them. All right. Let, let that be added to the record. But uh, What show we... is that from? We Can't Study. Yeah, it's We Can't Study. Oh, okay. It was the other girls of We Can't Study. I just wanted to mention some of the other harems that people mentioned. And, uh, for, you know, as thank you for commenting. So from Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Johan, his is Gal Gohan, and his waifu is Fujiwara. LA fan says that Ranma one and the half is the his favorite anime and manga of all time. Fuck yeah. Nighthawk uh one one nine X says his favorite uh harem anime is Two Love Rue and his favorite waifu is Lala. And this is with Taolet came in with the best answer and said, I've never watched a harem anime, but my waifu is Pato from Hunter X Hunter. I'm also pretty <laughs> positive Pato is a dude, but it's also left <laughs> ambiguous of their gender, so <laughs> Fucking sick. Regardless. Yes, fucking Even sick. It regardless. Fucking love, sick. love who you love. And uh, <laughs> that's all. That's all we got for right now. But thank you everyone who sent in their uh, harem things, and for everyone else who also commented. It's uh, feels good. So for today's topic, finally, let's get into the actual episode. Uh, this topic was brought in by good old Captain Soldier seventy six. Uh, we're gonna be talking. We're yeah. gonna go down a list of Dance Dance Revolution songs. <laughs> God fucking damn it. So we started talking the about best. We started talking about DDR because um we won't say where, but somewhere where uh Captain Soldier works there's a DDR machine. And I started talking about uh the two songs I remember most from uh DDR, which is I I I Butterfly. And then the <laughs> other one is Captain Jack, which I can't sing Captain Jack because Captain Jack will come after this this episode if he hears his song. <laughs> I I only know one DDR song and like because I don't I didn't I was poor I didn't play DDR <laughs> fucking and I'm being fucking fat so I'm being the worst at it <laughs> and so what did it, I'm fat too that did not stop me from um, mixing it up on the DDR machine I just, I just went slower than everyone else. <laughs> uh, what about you, uh, Captain? Oh, how you? How was your DDR experience? How good are you at DDR? I got, I got to like the. There was like four difficulties, right? I think I got to the third difficulty before I started to struggle, but I did enjoy it. And I don't know the question again. What was it again? It's all good. <laughs> the question <laughs> is, is how good are you at DDR? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, it was the, whatever the third difficulty was. I forgot what it was. It wasn't right. that hardcore. So let's go down some of these songs. Uh, feel the feel free to step in. The first song is Zero Slash One Angel VCO featuring AI Techno. It is featured in the Winx Club, and that is one of the songs in it. Actually, before we start with this, I just wanted to mention that one of the songs is from the Winx Club. You actually linked uh, Captain Soldier has linked some of the songs in the in the chat here. 
the Six... Wings Club beat the animated show? Yeah, so apparently it was it's a song that's from the Winx Club is just in DDR. <laughs> what? Yeah. When? Right? How? How does that crossover? I don't I don't understand the idea behind who licensed the music of DDR. <laughs> it it feels really weird. Um but link touch the first link that uh Captain Soldier sent, if you can see right here in the chat, uh Jace right here. This is <laughs> This... R- riveting, uh, riveting. Click <laughs> <laughs> oh, on this link. No, Everyone no, don't listening. worry. They'll hear the song too. Hopefully, this oh. doesn't get us taken down. Oh. But it is uh, one of the songs in DDR. It is Africa's Toto by True Kiss Destination. <laughs> and now we will play it so that people can hear it. Because now I'm actually kind of interested. How the fuck can you dance to Africa? So I don't know. It kind of reminds me of like Persona music, to be honest. All right, let me actually play it. So start playing it now if you want to hear it too. The great thing about this is that I can hear it in the background, but you guys can't hear me listening to Toto's Africa (laughs) in the background as well. This doesn't sound anything like Africa at all. (laughs) No, this doesn't sound anything like Africa. How is this? How is this? Why was this allowed? Rain down in Africa. <laughs> if only. Let me so let me do a quick another uh, look down this list right here. There's 99 Red Balloons by M Cree Crew Project original song by Nina, which is I'm gonna guess is again just 99 left balloons. <laughs> that is. Hey, correct. I like that. It's it's actually like not that. So the version I like is the uh, Goldfinger. I think it's Goldfinger, the Goldfinger version, which is the first version I heard. But I also like the original, and I'm glad that it's qu- or, uh, crediting the original. You like the original in English or in German? Both. Isn't the only difference between the two is that one says Luft and the other one says Red? I, I think so. Pretty much. Wow. Here's another song from DDR. It is Ain't No Mountain High Enough by Sloth Music Project. <laughs> Originally sung by Diana Ross and then actually put into uh, DDR. This is the weirdest. Guys, guys, I don't think this is going to work. There's a lot of DDR songs. All right. You know what? There is actually a lot of. Uh, there's Always by Micropods Trans Dance Remix by Man's Cool. <laughs> there's, so like this. Li- are you looking at like the Wikipedia list? Is I am looking at, at the. I am looking at. They actually got a Britney Spears song by actual Britney Spears in here. You gotta like, you gotta um, organize it by the what it, what it's featured in, and I think like the ones that are like ultra mix and whatever are the ones that you're looking for, or at least that's the ones I'm looking for because some of the more recent ones that say like PS3 or PS4 have like English song songs, uh, that were so not what not... you would actually expect from them. Yeah, not not the DDR we remember anyway. They do got tub thumping, tub thumping by Chumba Wumba. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. But yeah, these like 2014 editions, or maybe I don't know. Those look just looking at the names, they look like my favorite DDR song is uh, "Chocolate Rain," the Dance Club edition. <laughs> is that really in there? No, but you'd fucking believe it by this list. <laughs> 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 Chocolate rain. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Chocolate rain. <laughs> Funny story. My sister was like, just hit me up on Saturday and was like, hey, I'm going to go to K-Town. I was like, why? She's like, I'm going to go clubbing. I was like, that's so fucking random. <laughs> I- I got work. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got time to go I, into the club. I, I, would, I would not go Koreatown clubbing because Koreatown clubbing, there's like one, there's cover charges, but they're hidden in the form of you need to buy this like bottle service and this alcohol and you're going to get fucked up. Oh, so it's like the Japan uh, hostess clubs? <laughs> kind of. They they make you buy like a certain amount of like alcohol, even for like the karaoke places. Like they're nice karaoke places with really clean rooms, but there is like a food and drink minimum. That 
That's crazy. Uh, th- have, so you actually went recently to Japan. Did you ever try and go inside a hostess club? Um, I went to a maid cafe. That's close enough. Right? Uh, I, I wanted to go to uh, in Osaka. There was this thing called the the Bara Bar, which is just like big muscular men like selling you food and drinks. That and, sounds awesome. Like, <laughs> occasionally, they all Wait. line up together and flex and shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking awesome. Are they shirtless, or is it like that that white one White House chef that like got popular recently because he was fucking jacked? The oh, the White is House it... chef that looked like a JoJo character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that dude was fucking jacked, man. No, like these guys are they they obviously like lift weights and they take care of themselves and shit. But were they cut, or were they like big and bulky? That's what I want to know. They were they were pretty cut. Okay. Well, they they have like different body types. There's like the cut type, and there's like the big beefy type, and just lots of types. Now, are they shirtless? Um, I couldn't tell you. I didn't go inside, but Man. on the promotion, they were wearing black tank tops. I would pay extra for a specifically buff man to serve me food, and then at the end of the service, to rip his shirt with his flex, like. <laughs> Like, the flex or... so hard that his shirt literally rips in half, and I'm like, yes, I paid for this. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Alternatively, they could serve me food shirtless, but wearing gloves, because, you know, it's hygienic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want the shirt, but I want you to wear them gloves. <laughs> um, the, the maid cafe I went to, there was no, um, no drink charge or food charge. There was a if you wanted drinks and if you wanted food, you could get it. Uh, there's just like a minor charge at the door, and then basically whatever you, whatever else you want is a la carte. Mm-hmm. So then- we got we got food, we got drinks, and uh, they dance and sung. And well, a man got <laughs> the police got called. Uh huh. <laughs> go on. <laughs> um, I don't know if I should tell the story. Maybe. It- no, okay, yeah, I'll tell this story. Uh, so me and Bulma uh, had pre-booked this uh, maid cafe through our tour guide thing, and it's not like they gave us a tour. They were just like, here's the tickets. You go to Akihabara. You do this by yourself because normal people don't do this. And, and I was like, they called you weeb trash and walked away. <laughs> they spit in my face. Ah, uh, the authentic <laughs> otaku experience in Japan. No, but like uh, we went, we went to this place and we found the building. And like on the outside, there's a little sign that was like uh, this maid cafe. What is it? Uh, uh, Made of dreaming. Uh, that was the brand, and they have it's a it's a like a chain, like it's a. They have multiples of these uh, maid cafes, and um, the sign outside is like, "Good for women and children, men okay." <laughs> That's how I feel on the inside, too. Women and children, they're welcome. Men, yeah. just okay. Men, okay. Uh, so we go inside, and, like, they see us immediately, and they put on, like, animal ears on us, you know. And it was funny, because, like, they actually matched our hair colors. So the animal ears look like they were legitimately part of our heads. And I was like, oh, this is some nice attention to detail. But <laughs> I inside, appreciate it. But inside there was um, uh, a foreign family from the UK. And they, were, they were sitting at a different table. Um, one... No, he wasn't there. Uh, there was... We sat down, and then another uh, group from the UK showed up. Another group from Australia showed up. This Japanese man showed up with his daughter because it was his daughter's birthday. Uh, and then this other Japanese dude showed up alone. He and he it. he was the problem. Uh, say. Yeah. He started pounding back beers, because you can buy beer uh, at this maid cafe. He started pounding back beers. Um, and then he started, like, smoking basically chain smoking and the issue being that like there are signs in english in the cafe that is like no smoking now japan is a little different 
with their smoking laws because they allow smoking in restaurants. In fact, the, you will have a smoking section and a non-smoking section, just like old America. They still haven't gotten away with it. Like it's it's still pretty prevalent. Mm -hmm. But because it's a tourist attraction, they normally ask no smoking. But the sign was in English. Now, one of the maids goes up to him and he she politely asks him to stop smoking. Um, <clears throat> at this point, he starts like arguing with her. It's like it's just, you know, just arguing in Japanese. The the, 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 the gruff kind of Japanese voice. Not to be like very racist, but you know. <laughs> No, no, no. Like, <laughs> fucking turned, like, into Blanca or some shit? <laughs> so Blanca was at the maid cafe. Like, if I had to describe what this guy looked like, he looked like Hideo Kojima without fashion sense. <laughs> like a bump Kojima? <laughs> yeah. Like, the same, like same, same build, thin, you know. He's wearing, like, the same kind of glasses like Hideo would wear. <laughs> Except Hideo is fresh as hell. He wears nice clothes and things like that. This guy was wearing, like, head-to-toe, like, kind of whatever, like, a black shirt, black pants kind of combo. Ensemble. Yeah, and he's sitting right behind the Japanese man and his daughter. And so, the after the maid comes up to him and, and says to him, hey, uh, can you please not smoke in here? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, and she says this to him in Japanese. She leaves. And he starts kind of poking and prodding the the guy the, the father with his daughter and he starts saying in Japanese uh, thankfully Bulma knows some Japanese uh, to understand the situation he starts saying to him uh, something along the lines of uh, don't you think that this is uh, disgraceful isn't this like what what this is disgraceful why 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 do I have to do this why do I have to do this it's, hey hey don't you think this is fucking disgraceful <clears throat> and like the guy obviously didn't want to be poked. <laughs> the guy is just like, I'm I'm here with my fucking daughter and she wanted to go to a fucking maid cafe. Can you leave me alone? <laughs> but so the 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 everything continues on and there's a couple like the maids dance and they sing and they bring out food to people and that's all going in, in between. And all of a sudden this guy starts getting up in the uh uh, one of the maid's faces, specifically the maid at the register, he starts putting his finger like right in her face and just yelling and yelling, yelling. He sits down, gets up, yelling, yelling, yelling in Japanese to this woman, and he has like no shame because he like his finger is literally in this woman's face, and that's when I realize I look around. I'm like, this maid cafe has no male employees. There is no bouncer. There is nothing here. So if there's ever an ounce of trouble with the girls, they fucking have to handle this shit themselves. Uh -huh. Even the cook in the back was a very small woman. And I was like, ah, fuck. So immediately as he starts like putting his finger in her face, like the, the foreigners all perk up. And of course... In Los Angeles, you wouldn't just let that shit happen. No. If you see someone like doing that to one an employee and two like a woman of small stature, what the fuck would you do that? No, immediately people would get into that like conversation and in that business yeah. and stop that. Yeah, that that actually funny enough. As you mentioned that, that actually happened once when uh, this was just to give a time frame. It was after Trump was elected. Some uh, man came in and started hostling the Pollo Loco girl about um, how she's going to go back to her country. The girl who, of course, spoke perfect English and was <laughs> Mexican. And it like as soon as he started talking shit, it immediately every single person in there, including me, who does not like to fight, stood up. It was like a very clear like, you better get the hell out of here. But thankfully, the lady herself was able to also go like, fuck you, asshole, and kick them out of the Pollo Loco. <laughs> <laughs> so so you had like your own like Deadpool moment where the 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 dudes are in the bar and like the moment they start poking at that dude they pull their guns and like everybody gets up they're like holy shit <laughs> pretty much <laughs> <laughs> but, but in a maid, maid cafe 
Okay, so the issue being is that most of us are foreigners, and we're well aware that, like, if we did get into a tussle, the police wouldn't look kindly on us foreigners beating the fuck out of a Japanese man. No. Now, we were waiting for the instance where he actually put his hands on someone. You know, he didn't put his hands on the maid, uh, but obviously everyone was on edge. And the worst part is things didn't stop. Like, everything that was going on didn't all of a sudden come to a halt. The other maids kept performing and working and doing their job. And I was like, this is a load of bullshit. What the fuck is going on here? Uh, To one point, uh, one of the guys from Australia, he got up. He walked over to the maid. He's like, hey, are you okay? Is everything? And of course, he's speaking English. And she's just like, yeah, yeah, okay, it's it's okay. He goes sit down. Then the guy starts getting up in her face again, pointing his finger and fucking just being a little bitch. And uh, this guy's girlfriend gets up. This uh, the Australian girlfriend gets up, goes over to her. She obviously knows some Japanese, and goes to her, "Hey, do you need something to be done? Are you okay? You know." starts communicating with her uh, in Japanese. And then the guy who's causing a ruckus uh, uh, starts yelling at this Australian woman. And she fucking turns on a dime and is like, uh, I'm talking to her right now, not you. You can go. I'm, I'm talking to her. And so she turns her back on him. And he he's like tries to turn the woman around the Australian woman, he tries to turn her around by physically, like, grabbing her arm. And that's where he fucked up. Yeah, that's... uh... Because (laughs) he, as soon as he put his hand on her, her Australian boyfriend, who is in much larger stature than him, And fucking Australian. (laughs) (laughs) And fucking hailed down thunder on him? Got it. And fucking Australian him in the face. No, he didn't actually fight him, but he like shoved him real good and the guy crumpled. He started like freaking out. He took off his glasses and was like, no, 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 blah, 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 no, no, no. And um, the, he's like, you don't fucking lay a hand on her or these women, blah, blah, blah. And he fucking like the two of them left because it was obvious that the guy crumpled down and wasn't going to do shit anymore. Or so we thought. Uh, the Australians left because they know if they did get into a fight, they're going to be kicked out of the fucking country. Um, so they leave. The guy is still there, still smoking, still drinking beers, and still like occasionally getting and bothering like these women. And but the thing is, he doesn't put his hand on someone again. So for the most part, we're like just keeping an eye on him. And then the wildest shit happens. The police show up. And the policeman walks over to him. And he sits down right across from the guy. Looks him in the eye. And starts to talk to him very calmly. And they both get up. And they leave. (laughs) That's weird. Yeah, it was the weirdest shit. Because, like, Los Angeles, that police officer would have just... Immediately Beat started fuck out of him. beating him with the <laughs> stick already. Just would have beat the fuck out of him and would have like had him in cuffs and that guy would have been on the ground. No, it, it, he handled it like like a fucking pro. He just walked in there, spoke off, and was like, duh, duh, duh. You know, let's, let's, let's fucking go. And they left calmly. But, you guys have had some terrible runs with cops because that's never happened to me. I'm just saying. I mean, I'm not. I'm not from a your, troublemaker. From your experience with cops? <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> damn. Mm, well, let's say I've seen some shit, but I don't really want to talk about it. I am from South Central. Yeah, he grew up in somewhere different. <laughs> I've also had a thing of like the the cops for a while. One of my uncles, he kept pulling him over for an entire year. Until finally, at the end of the year, the cop asked him, so what gang are you from? 
And my uncle was so annoyed, he just looked at him and said, I ain't in no gang. And if I was, I would be the leader. And he left him alone. <laughs> so, oh, my God. But yeah, um, it ended without without a scuffle. I mean, aside from uh, that guy being pushed to the goddamn ground. Yeah, except uh, for the Australian man bringing down the thunder, as we, as the uh, captain previously said. Yeah, but basically the entire time, uh, me and Baldwin were sitting on the edge of our seats, ready to fucking run over and beat the crap out of this guy. <laughs> we're like, oh, vacation's ending early. <laughs> Must defend the maid cafe. <laughs> I'm gonna die on that hill. I'm gonna die on this hill with, beat his ass with you. Where was he? By the way, was he wearing animal ears as well? Because no, uh, no, that's that's the thing. They didn't. He didn't let the like. I don't know what the fuck up with what, what the fuck was up with this guy because like he wouldn't let them put the animal ears on him. Like it seems like he was there to just just great. be a complete bitch. Like <laughs> I don't fucking know because there was another Japanese man who came in at a certain point and just ignored the entire situation. But he was, <laughs> he was what you would, like, you know how they show otaku in, like, anime? Yes. And, like, you know how they, they like, it's like, oh, they draw this really, really fat guy. He's wearing flannel. He has a bowl cut. He has glasses. Small ass He head. has, <laughs> yeah, small ass head. Really, really big backpack. Um, wearing a headband. Uh, and... <laughs> He, he had with him this uh, large binder that was just full to the brim with photos of him and maids because you could take a photo op with them. But apparently what he does is he he's a VIP member there because he was in the VIP section. Okay. He, <laughs> he, he writes down uh, signs and uh, he writes big signs. And has the girls hold them while he takes photos with them. That's his thing. And, but this guy just exuded 100% ot- otaku, like, o- otaku energy. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. Otaku? <laughs> otaku. He had, he had that, like, the fucking comical otaku voice. Like, the really deep, like, just... Ooh. Uh, no, but god damn it! <laughs> oh, whoa. Now I'm doing Audrey the Giant. No, well, I mean, like, he just had this voice that was just like the deep, like, oh, hey, dude, you know, I'm, I'm hey, this big, bird. Fucking, I'm this big <laughs> fucking nerd. Like, he, he spoke that way, and it was so jarring. Like, because this was... It was literally a cartoon character come to life. It was the wildest shit. On top of this guy getting in women's faces, chain smoking, and drinking like really large beers. It, <laughs> it was it was the weirdest thing that happened to me in Japan. The other thing I was gonna say is that that exact scenario also sounds like one of the many scenarios in Yakuza where a guy starts trying shit and then a random fight breaks out. The only difference is that there was no fighting. <laughs> Maybe Needless the- to say, I, I know that I would fucking destroy that man. Oh, uh, no doubt. If fucking <laughs> dope at the fucking, like, bum-ass Kojima fell down after one shove, <laughs> he's gonna, you're, you're gonna, like, literally just poke him. He's gonna fall over. And just have a fucking <laughs> Yamcha hole on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Stand over him. You're gonna, then you're gonna scream. Like the like the Cybermen. Here, uh, listeners. Jace is six two, three hundred pounds. Wait, you're six two? I thought you were only six feet. Are you really six two? Yeah. Damn, you're big. In height. No, I, I had no, no I idea how, that you were six. I know how tall Derek Fisher is. All right, cool. <laughs> Now, people often look at me and they're like, you're not 300 pounds. I'm like, yes, I am 300 pounds. It's just distributed very evenly over my very large frame. But yes, <laughs> yeah. I am 300 pounds. It's like when you will uh... see me. Go ahead, sir. 
I was gonna say people see me and they're like, "You're not two hundred and fifty pounds." I'm like, "Yeah, I am. It's all muscle, baby." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then you rip off the shirt. Then you start doing the flex. <laughs> start flexing. Bar bar. Just... You could pay an extra ten dollars, and I'll serve you a burger, <laughs> and I'll watch you eat it too. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, I'm not. I am not as tall as Jace. We are the opposite. He should be Ginyu, and I should be Jace in comparison. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's fair. You're more. I, I was gonna say he's built like Riku, but you're built like Goldo. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that! I'd rather be. I'd rather be. You couldn't say, like, burner or something? I couldn't say burner, but like I said, it just came into my head in the most fucked up way possible. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, like, the difference with the difference in, like, height and, like, width of burner and Jace also makes a lot of sense. Because burner is, like, fucking huge compared to Jace. Man. I really want to go. Even though you just literally told me the story about like this really weird drunk dude, I still want to go to Japan. Oh, Japan is sick as hell. I mean, that was that was the worst thing that happened to me. That that was the worst thing that happened to me. Right, I literally, figured it out. I literally, it everything out. else was fantastic. So, in terms of height, it is Burder, Raccoon, Ginyu, Jace, then Goldo, and somewhere in between there is Frieza. I'm looking at this terrible picture. I will show it to you in a moment. But if we were to compare heights, <laughs> fucking Jace would actually be Burner, and I would probably actually be Raccoon. I don't. I think you're being pretty generous about your overalls. <laughs> okay, fine. Let's let's throw in Wokey. All right. I think Wokey is Burner. I think Wokey, yeah, Wokey, Wokey is, is Burner. Wokey is Burner height. Instead of Jace, he would be Raccoon, and then I would be. Ginyu, and then Raccoon would be Jace. Yeah, somewhere, Actually, yeah, this, somewhere between... This is so, so fucking confusing for the listeners. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, we're throwing like, a round of a lot of fucking fake-ass names. Just, just fucking say the numbers. Fucking, uh, well, do, you know, do you know how tall you are? I think I'm six-something. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Am I? I think yeah. I'm. I don't think I'm as tall as you, though. So I might just be on the. What the fuck are you talking about? You're taller than me. No, I'm yeah. not. Am You're... I taller than you? Yes, you really? are. Holy yeah, shit, I'm taller than you. <laughs> <laughs> I never noticed. What the fuck? <laughs> you know. Yeah, you're definitely taller than him. I feel like you kind of walk. I do, is... No, because I didn't want to say it and like be mean, but you kind of walk with a slouch. I feel like if you walk in when you stood straight up, you definitely notice that you're taller than him. Yeah, it's that de I definitely have a heavy slouch going on. That's for sure. Uh, what? Who is this man's face? Who was coming from the beginning of yours? I don't know. What the fuck? Are yeah, you going to find a regular picture of the Ginyu Force? <laughs> and then they fucking photoshopped in Frieza as well? This is, this is not one man. This is what is this is an entire team of people? It's like it's like Hood Naruto, but with Ginyu Force members. Uh, you, you gotta insert this photo now. I, <laughs> I do, unfortunately. Let me save this picture because I want to do a race. If I haven't witnessed this, so do they. I don't know who the fuck any of these people are. <laughs> Frieza's the best. He has a fucking mustache. They all have mustaches. <laughs> the Jason's face, by the way, is so fucking tiny. <laughs> It's Great, like... now you super have to put this photo in. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to. <laughs> it's like... fucking... It also makes me question, because Ginyu has a beard, so does that mean that his fucking weird brain can be shaved? <laughs> <laughs> I also just noticed that on the, on the Raycoob, they redrew the hair. 
Does that mean that they they had to Photoshop out the hair so it better fit this man's weird looking face? They didn't redraw the hair. They did. Not redraw, but they cropped it out specifically. There's something off uh, about it. I think it's because R- Raccoon's missing his chin. Oh, oh yeah, there's that too. There's a lot going wrong with this picture. Also, the Goldo also looks wrong because that man's mouth <laughs> is also where he has two different sets of eyes. <laughs> they did not replace the side <laughs> eyes with real eyes. <laughs> <laughs> the longer you stare at this picture, the worse it gets. It's like a fucking uh, Eldrick abomination, where the more I stare at it, the more I don't understand what's going on. Uh, you're going to have to, like, slow zoom this image in there. Oh, no, I plan. I got to check out the time period. Okay, I see the exact time period of it right there. Um, Yeah, I think you both would really love Japan. Uh Wokey, I think you would really hate travel to Japan. You think so? I did. I did used to take the 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 bus and subway system to to school. No, I mean travel to Japan, like the flight over. Really? Is it a long yeah. flight? It's a. It is a twelve hour flight. Okay. Uh, so that's the half. That's half a day, and also you'd be in a very very tiny, like seat. So. Oh. What, what happened was uh, I thought ahead and I bought myself two seats. They told me I didn't have to, uh, but I was like, nah, I'm going to do that because uh, I, I I don't know how big I am in an international flight plane. Like, I don't fucking know. So I was like, oh, I'm going to buy two seats. And then thank God I did <laughs> it was really because tiny. it was tiny. It was It was completely uncomfortable. But technically, I had an entire row for uh, me and Bulma, so it was it was nice and comfy. Yeah, I probably. Yeah, I have figured to do I would just. I figured I would just go first class. That'd be. Oh, you you just you just fucking balling like that? Fuck you! <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah, a ball bro. so hard. <laughs> Buy all the Blu-ray DVDs of anime. I hope you realize. Ball so hard. I hope you realize a first class ticket to Japan is like five thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah. I'm, what if I I'm go so by... hard that even? Damn it! You killed the joke. I did. Never <laughs> mind. What if I go by boat? What if I arrive King Kong style, where I'm in the back of a boat, passed out for the majority of it? <laughs> but you're just like tied to the deck of it. <laughs> yeah. So I'm tied to the deck of a boat. <laughs> <laughs> Arrive in Japan like King Kong because I'm going to be way taller than everyone else there. <laughs> no, uh, for you, I would highly suggest either buying two seats or business class. Mm, I am a ball about business. I'll have to figure out something. We're going to figure it out one day. Me and my family are going to go there and have a good old time. I think we wanted to go for uh, when my brother graduated high school, but then, you know, stuff happens and we couldn't go yeah. at that time. But I would love to go at some point because it's it's one of those things where I guess like you just think about it so many times as a kid. Specifically, I guess it's specifically for people who grew up of like trying to understand that the things you would like all come from this one place and how they have stuff <laughs> similar to yours, but it's completely different. So it's, like, it's, it's just this magical weeaboo land. <laughs> yes, exactly. And Except it's it's not. <laughs> no, I bet it's not. It's mostly porn shops, which is also fine because my sister loves buying porn. So it's gonna be fine. Question: Do you have tattoos, or does Bulma have any tattoos? How are they about tattoos? Uh, I do not have any tattoos. Bulma doesn't have any tattoos. We did plan on getting tattoos actually in Japan, but the artist was unavailable at the time. Um. And the answer to that is on foreigners, they think it's kitschy and interesting because they know that you're not Yakuza and you're not a gangster. <laughs> okay, uh, what what if but... you are an Asian man that kind of looks like you belong there and then like you, you show up to a hot spring, right? Right, like, so oh. some hot springs, they will turn you away completely. Mm-hmm. Um, they offer special hotels like special onsens that like are private 
So, like, there's, like, a hot spring in your fucking room. So you can do you can do those, um, but like public pools and even at the beach, sometimes they they require you to uh, hide your tattoo or just not be there. They're still pretty like they're they're like if you're walking around, they don't care. But like specifically in like hot springs and pool areas and things like that, it's it's a very still a serious issue somehow. Well, yeah, it's one of those things, I guess that. They just associate it so much, so they're never going to stop associating with it. Yeah. Uh, wait one moment, because I need to get the charger for this laptop, because I only got like uh, 10 minutes left before it uh, dies out. So I'll, I'll be right back. Pause. Hello, we're we back. Uh, I don't remember, but now I kind of want to go on this thing about uh, Chuck E. Cheese and stuff. Uh, or Dave and Buster type things where you're actually saving up <laughs> tickets. Huh? Tickets. Tickets. <laughs> well, I don't know what they are anymore. I Back in my day, back when things were pure, in Chuck E. Cheese land, it was tickets. And you had to save <laughs> a, a lot of companies now, like, like round one, I don't know if Chuck E. Cheese still does it, but like even arcades at the mall or Dave & Buster's, they, they just have cards. And then you don't get physical tickets anymore. They just keep track of it on the card for you. Uh, so That makes sense, because you could totally... Uh, fake and like rip off tickets in certain ways. Um, in the last Chuck E. Cheese that I went to, which was about a couple months ago, um, they definitely had tickets f- uh, for like playing games. They didn't have coins anymore, but they totally still had the um, they had tickets coming out, and you still had to go to like the ticket muncher, and the ticket muncher had to eat them, <laughs> and that's how you got your total number. Oh god! You know what? That makes me laugh because like I remember a few years back. Maybe even longer. Chuck E. Cheese that had that promotion. We're like, hey, you can stick your kid in this wind tube where we just have like a million tickets <laughs> flying around. Yeah. We'll give them some sticky gloves and then whatever they get, you can keep. My my niece <laughs> and sister went in one of those together for her birthday. Oh my god. Because uh, Hispanic families are still supporting Chuck E. Cheese this strong in, <laughs> apparently. But yeah, did it pay off? I don't know. She was like f- five so to four or something, so she wasn't very good at catching them. I remember being very not great with her technique. I remember thinking like she's there's no way for her to actually know the best way to get these tickets. <laughs> Just like she's wasting it. She's, she's wasting, wasting them. <laughs> it's really odd when you think how many places <laughs> places do it. Like Shakey's does it. Uh. Again, just random arcade malls. They just have. Was, Wait, not, has it? Yeah, they have like their. Do you know how they have their own arcade? I'm pretty sure yeah. they do like the card thing now. Oh, the card thing! I thought you were talking about the fucking Chuck E. Cheese style thing where they put them in there. Because I was going to say, there's no room in a Shakey's to put a kid in a tube and give him a bunch of. <laughs> oh yeah, no, they totally don't. <laughs> No, they don't got the space for that. They they make it. They have to make all the room for all the bunch of lunch and all the chicken that you're eating. And then like the new one is like Bolero. Bolero is like bowling and arcade games. And then round one has like karaoke and like arcade games. There's bunch a round of... one coming to Burbank, and I'm so fucking excited. So ready you are. for for well, that. What's the other one? Speed Zone. Speed Zone. Oh, Speed... Okay, I like Speed Zone because Speed Zone is like... They got go-karts, bitch. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think I'm absolutely gonna fuck around with the go-kart track? Can you, you fit inside the go-kart? Dave... What? <laughs> <laughs> I asked because I don't think I can fit in a go-kart. So I'm not I know, sure. I know, I know I can't. I know I well, can't. Hold up. Okay, okay, okay. So take your happy ass to the speed zone. Look it up on Google Maps. It is towards my direction in 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 like relation to where you guys live. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Right. Sure. I don't see how this zone. answers whether or not you could go inside the fucking go kart, which is the I'm, game. I'm getting there. I am getting there. Okay, which, okay. It, it's weird that like the further east you go, more go kart places pop up. But what I'm trying to say is that. There are go karts built specifically for two people, for a parent and a child, to drive together. <laughs> and so you take one spot each for your butt cheek. I get. <laughs> I, I was not going there with that. I was. I was. What I was trying 
trying to say was uh, you cut me off before I could finish. I was trying to say that they have different go karts. So they have that one, right? They have adult go karts where they obviously fit adults, and then oh, excuse me, they have children's go karts where kids can go. They're obviously move slower and they're smaller to fit kids, and they're safer because you know track is. I don't think I could. I don't think I could fit in an adult go kart. I hate both of you. I don't think I could. I don't think I could rob a parent and child of their go kart just so I could go on a go kart. <laughs> so then, <laughs> when the parent asks, "Sister, is there any room for me and my child?" No, ma'am. The giant Filipino man took your go kart. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him tear ass on that roadway, though. <laughs> no, I I believe that you guys will find a go kart with which you could fit. I can't Two even, butt cheeks on I one can't chair, even fit all right? On, on the Batman ride at Six Flags, you expect me to fit in a go kart? Dude, freaking the Batman ride gives me like anxiety when I get on it because I always feel like as soon as I get off of it that I'm gonna get a leg cramp. Okay, maybe you can get on it because I'm not. I can't get on the Batman. It's not big enough for me. Last time I was able to ride it. When I was. But... I don't know if now. When I, definitely when I went to Six Flags, they barely had any rides that could fit bigger people. And a lot of the times it was like, we have two seats in the back for you, <laughs> fatty. So if you want to go on here, <laughs> you can go on here. Don't you know what ride is absolutely terrible? What? Fucking the Green Lantern ride. Oh my god. <laughs> we went on that like the summer it opened. It was the hottest piece of dog shit. <laughs> So the it seats was just were like small, the like the fucking like bump, the bump to cradle your ass cheek was like sticking into your ball sack if you're a dude. The fucking <laughs> harness, the harness was like fucking choking you out, and like the ride itself wasn't even fun. It was like not even fast. It was just like, hey, you slowly fall down this track. You you go up and down on a track that's not even like <laughs> that. Sounds like you're in like a. A coaster of situation. No, you're literally in these spinning like discs that just go up and down and rotate, and they're the worst. And your I, imagination I, to be more exciting. It gave me the biggest fucking headache. And you know what? I would I would sooner go get stuck on the Riddler again <laughs> than fucking ride that ride. <laughs> I was stuck on the Riddler as a kid when it first opened for an hour upside down. Oh, okay. I was about to say it doesn't matter if unless it's upside down. And we were That's upside rough, down. Man. <laughs> that sounds fucking that sucks. frightening. Yeah, the head went to like the the all the blood went to our heads, and it was like it, it was really bad. And, and then you know, I, I wasn't an hour upside down completely. They moved us, but then we were still stuck up there for a while, and then we had to like all like disboard and shit, and it was annoying. Did they give you anything for, like, you were stuck upside down on the Riddler? Well, if they did, they didn't give it to me directly. I'm sure they might have given it to our camp counselors. Give it, give but not a, to me. Give them a shirt that says, I got kids stuck on the Riddler. They're just like, riddle me this. Who gets stuck on a, on a fucking roller coaster for one hour? You do, asshole. <laughs> Thank you Speaking for writing my replies, I haven't. I don't know if you guys have, like, noticed... But, like, the way Six Flags is laid out, it's almost designed to have, like, as soon as the, the people walk in at the start of the day, it almost has, like, its own flow of traffic where everyone is at the, the same part of the park at the exact same time. Uh -huh. So, like, I've learned that instead of going left towards the Revolution because it's the first roller coaster you see, is to go right to Goliath because you can ride that shit four times before anybody even re realizes it's, oh, yeah, there's fucking Goliath right there. It's I know awesome. this. I know this, and I've done this with you. <laughs> <laughs> I... It's fucking genius because, like, everyone's going to the little baby rides, and then here we are fucking goliath and then like you go a little bit more there's riddler batman there's fucking um dog shit green lantern there's fucking <laughs> <laughs> and then you make it to the top and everyone converges because you know they make it you know halfway around the park each you get to superman and then you can hit up the ninja i think the most depressing thing about six flags is the Superman ride used to have Superman at the top of it, 
and when you would ride, you'd see him at the very tip top. Did they? It, they had. They removed him a long time ago. It's when they uh, added that Lex Luthor side to the ride, where it just drops up and down. They and they reversed how the Superman ride works, so Superman no longer needed to be up there because the cart is facing the other way. You're not going to see him. They kept Superman in an abandoned field behind uh, Six Flags, like in in like literally like desert area in the grass. And every time you'd go ride the Terminator Salvation ride, you could peek over the hill and you would see him just by himself out there in the field, just alone. Lex Luthor had finally put a stop to Superman. <sighs> the Terminator ride is boo-boo. I think that's gone too. I think they reskinned it into something else. Yeah, I think so. And then fucking, they removed Deja Vu, which that ride was unsafe, to be honest. But it was yeah, but it was I still feel a fun like a ride. A lot of our things about Six Flags so far is it's unsafe and it's extremely <laughs> dangerous. Hey, the carnival games aren't dangerous. The Atom Smasher is dangerous. Do they still have the Atom Smasher? Um, which one's the Atom Smasher? That's the one where you go inside a tiny. This is why I know I can't fit in a go kart. You fit inside a tiny little hole and they spin you in a circle for a bit. But oh my god! Okay, look, the seating for that is way smaller than a fucking go kart. You'll fit in the go kart, not maybe not in Six Flags go karts, because I know they have go karts. But you'll fit in a go kart. Trust me. My way. I am. I am not. I mean, I am not exactly very small myself. And let me tell you, I got wiggle room, mm. so I fully believe you guys can get in there. The Adam Smasher made me want to cut off my leg. That's how <laughs> my ride experience on the Adam Smasher went. I was like, Lord, this is happening. Lord, if you could hear me, take this leg. I no longer want to feel paid from it. We fucking, <laughs> we went on that, uh, what's that, like, raft ride where you could fit, like, eight people? The river? River rafter? Whatever that's called. So, like, like when I when I went on that ride the last time, uh, my friends had taken off their shoes and stuffed them in the lockers. So they, they were waiting in line the whole time without wearing shoes. And then we got on the ride. We enjoyed it. And I was like, oh. My shoes are wet. And they're like, our shoes are dry. And we got off the ride, and then they were, like, exiting um, that area. And then the attendant comes, and they're like, hey, what happened to your shoes? <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, oh, it's in the lockers. And they're like, oh, you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to be wearing shoes at all times. And it was that same dude who, like, boarded us. And he's like, fuck. <laughs> Fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> That's my, that's my third strike. I'm about to be yeah, he's like, he's these, like mother, these motherfuckers out here walking around with no shoes. What the fuck is wrong with these fucking people? <laughs> yeah, but you can see the moment on his face where he realized that he fucked up. And you're just like, well, make sure you don't do it again. Enjoy your day. <laughs> make sure you don't do it again. Like, don't do it again. Like, you're about to go and lie to do it again. <laughs> But like that, that particular ride has like a little metal bar at the bottom that you put your feet on. I, I didn't give a shit. I, I wanted to get wet, but you can put your feet on it in, in, for that specific reason. If you want to get your shoes wet, and they have like a little middle part that's actually covered in plastic because you will get drenched on that ride. Man, I think it's been literal years since I went. How's Six Flags even doing right now? Is it doing fine? Is it doing well? I haven't checked like anything any consensus or anything like that but i feel like right now six flag probably six flags probably ranks below like knots and for like the longest time i put six flags up there in like california amusement parks yeah like back in the day i would be like disneyland six flags even sometimes i would be like six flags above disneyland because i do love that thrill ride but uh it used to be disneyland six flags universal knots <laughs> Not, then yeah. Legoland. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but what about California Adventure? Or are you bunching that in with Disneyland? Uh, I'm, okay, I'm first a bunch, of all, California I'm, Adventure did not become a park until way later. Just because Disney charged yeah. double for it does not mean... I'll, I'll bunch that in with Disneyland. No, right. don't do that because that makes it worse. Let's say back in the day, California Adventure was all the way at the fucking bottom below Knott's. 
Dude, when well, California hey. Adventure opened, it's it sucked so hard. It sucked. It so I, I went to the. I I was at the opening. I was at the opening night. Were you? Did you ride Superstar Limo? Yes, I did. Oh my god! I I I only learned about Superstar Limo way later. But so was it as bad as it sounded? Because it was. It looks horrible. For those for people who don't know, Superstar Limo was supposed to be a um a limousine dark ride where you went across uh california and it was supposed to originally be a very fast moving um car and then princess diana died and then they said we can't make a very fast chase with paparazzis as a ride anymore because that's not cool so they made it super (laughs) slow and it's like uh it's it's a ride where you like literally go up to someone it's like look it's jackie chan and that's it um yeah, no, I went to the opening. I didn't ride that ride at opening. I rode it soon after, I believe. But um, they used to have McDonald's in the park. Uh, they no longer have that promotion anymore. Yeah, uh, I, I think it was, it was 11 years old when it opened. Uh, and there was a giant orange that housed the uh, the swing set. Um Everything was way different. Everything was really like themed after California. And to be honest, that's really fucking boring to Californians. <laughs> yeah. Making a but, park about California but, in California is the dumbest thing you could possibly imagine. But fun to visitors, I believe. But Disneyland's biggest uh, customers are people who live in Southern California. So they had to change it. And now it's it's pretty sweet. Yeah, I'll say modern California is different. The obviously the biggest thing that I always would, is always going to be a bummer, regardless of what they replace it with, was the, the losing the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. That's have you ridden? Have you ridden the the Guardians ride? No, not yet. But uh, I don't know if I I really like Tower of Terror. I know they're basically the same ride. <laughs> For most people, it's like the principle of it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it was such a like cool. I like I love the aesthetics of it, and I didn't like the idea. I also just don't like the idea of like the only reason that it seemed like they got rid of it was specifically because they're like, let's put some more Marvel shit up in here, and Marvel shit is cool, but also there was never. It's it was such a, a weird, interesting thing of like, there's a ride based off the Twilight Zone in Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> like what? And then also it had a great fake Rod Sterling when you went in. It was very well done. Like, regardless of what you, um, if you like Guardians better, there's no denying how good Twilight oh, uh, yeah. Tower Terror like, was. The, the theming up until you start riding the ride was gorgeous and, like, really unsettling. Yeah. It was... And it's a bummer just the idea that it's gone. So I haven't been back to Disneyland in a bit because I think we're just saving... We might be um, planning to go to Disneyland pretty soon as a surprise thing for my father's birthday because my father loves Disneyland and he also loves Star Wars. So it's like a double it's a double like win. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe I'll get to experience it then. Alex's Edge is amazing. Can't wait to go. It's a shame that when I go, all the cool things that people stole are going to be missing, but it's fine. (laughs) That's the price of waiting. I think you're just I think you're just missing sporks. Okay, fair enough. Spork, sporks and uh, little cards that they like that tell you what position you're going to be as on the Millennium Falcon ride. But you were supposed to give those back anyways. I don't know how people managed to steal them because if I was a Disney employee, I'm like, where the hey, where the fuck is your card? You were here for five minutes. Where the fuck? I think Did it go? I think if anyone was going to be able to steal one of those, my dad would figure it out a way. He's very good at <laughs> getting things his way. <laughs> it would even be the thing of like he didn't even say it. he would tell him to their face. I'm just keeping this, <laughs> and it would, he would like, sir, don't wait. You can't do that. Walk, sir, wait. And just walks away. And then he goes, ah, it's okay. It's okay. And he just walks away, and everything's fine. He, like, laughs at them, and then <laughs> it makes it seem like he's going to give it back, and he never does. <laughs> It'd be great. 
Uh, I'll say, oh, by the way, we've hit the uh, round the hour mark, so it looks like it's a time to bring a close down to this episode of Between Buddies. Um, we went on the wildest of tangents and ended up here. <laughs> what the Dude, fuck when we came back. That, no, that's what... But when we came back, we didn't even remember what the fuck we were talking about in the first place. Yeah, that's going to oh, happen exactly. a lot. That's going to happen a lot with us. So, <laughs> get used to it. Really, uh, the... For this episode, for this episode, comment down below what is your favorite theme park slash and or ride that you've been to? And I want to know about local shit. Yeah, if you got a local park, tell us about it. Oh, you know what? You know, this is the this is gonna be a first two episodes in. The next episode should totally be more about more theme park. We we really we I don't think people are fully understand because they haven't listened to our private conversations how much we love talking about theme parks. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, theme parks that... are great. Yeah, they are. So leave that down below, and so we can hear some of the stuff about that. And uh, join us next time when we get our buddies together and we go, we go forward and talk. And as always, if you liked it, leave a like as well. That's it's really helpful. Actually, it was very nice to see a lot of people again. If uh, I think if people see my channel, they know this because I say this every time I don't release anything Dokkan or Gotcha related. I'm always afraid that something's not going to be that like five people will watch it. But if those five people watch it and all five of them like it, then I'll continue making stuff regardless as long as I know that you like it. So show support any way you can and we'll join us next time for another episode of Between Buddies. So why don't you say goodbye, buddies? Wait, that's Bye. not how we end the show. Play me <laughs> off, Jace. <laughs> Give me go. A second, sorry. What do you? <laughs> not so easy, huh? Now you know how it feels like whenever I try and do an introduction. <laughs> oh, it's a lot. The hair, the bod. When you're staring at a demigod. Oh, what can I say except? You're welcome for the tides, the sun, the sky. Hey, it's okay, it's okay. You're welcome. I'm just an ordinary demiguy. Hey, what has two thumbs and pulled up the sky? You were wobbling, yay, hi, this guy. All right. I swear to God, if I get copyright struck because you put a, you needed a backing track. <laughs>